and Frederick Douglass Knowles, who is the poet laureate from Hartford. So that's a little bit of what's coming up for us. Uh, check our website. You can get onto the constant contact newsletter, so on and so forth. So today, uh, really grateful to have James Gifford with us. Uh, James did used to live in Connecticut, which is maybe a portion of the reason he got here, uh, although we let people talk from other states all the time, especially with Zoom. Uh, he's a writer, editor, and publisher focused on consumer issues. He's got 30 years experience in technology and telecommunications. He's a writer and consultant on consumer issues of all sorts. And uh, as I said, he's a former Connecticut resident, and now he lives in Denver, a very different environment. So Jim, welcome. Thanks very much. Anyway, this is Cut the Cord. This is a, uh, this is a uh, presentation that I created in uh, late 2016. I lived in Tolland and I was involved with the library. I was on the library board and, and things. And I suggested, I forget why it became a topic right then. And I made a suggestion to the librarian. I said, wouldn't this make a great session? She agreed. So we put it out and filled the room at 65 people and did another one two weeks later and filled the room with 65 people. And she put it out on the secret librarian network and the request started coming in and I ended up doing uh, 30 of these across the state. I didn't get quite as far as your corner. I think I got to Litchfield, uh, but I, I didn't get any further up, but I got to virtually every corner of the state doing it. And then for reasons that uh, don't bear examining, I uh, left Connecticut and uh, moved to uh, Denver. Uh, actually, the city next to it, Aurora, which nobody's ever heard of outside of the state. Uh, it's actually as big as Denver, but it's boring. Uh, and I kept getting requests to do the, 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 the session, and I always had to get back and say, well, I don't know if your budget includes airfare, but and it never did. Uh, so then uh, a very quick uh, librarian about six months ago said, well, you know, we're doing stuff on Zoom now. And so here I am. Uh, I've, I've been given five of these so far. I've got 15 more scheduled. Uh, it, it looks like I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life, which is fine. I enjoy talking about it. And uh, you're fortunate in that I have streamlined the presentation. The original presentation I gave for live uh, did very poorly on the first virtual one. It, was, it, it just dragged. So I've been streamlining it and refining it. So you get the refined streamlined 2021 version. Um, anyway, let me make sure I've got the right. Um, Basically, what does this presentation cover? It covers the technical basics of how to view streaming content, which is really quite simple. Almost anyone can do it. Um, it's no more complicated than um, plugging in a, uh, I mean, uh, setting a phone up for Wi-Fi or something. It's, it, it's, uh, some of you may need somebody more technical to, for some of the details, but in general, it's very, very easy. It's not like the old days where when you bought a VCR, there were 74 cables, all of which were identical and you could get wrong. It's very simple these days. Uh, we'll talk about the various kinds of streaming content that are out there. Uh, there's an enormous variation, much more so than when I started this talk in 2017. And um, my focus really is how to get control of your cable services and costs. It's not about getting bargains. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to get, uh, you know, another six months of introductory rates or how to chisel them out of six months of free HBO. That's a losing game. Uh, no matter how many times you may have played it and maybe thought you won, it's kind of a losing game with the cable companies. So. My focus is how you get this down to a, 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 a setup where you have control uh, and they can't yank your chain as much anymore. Um, takes about an hour, uh, which, which, is a, which, is, which is optimistic. Uh, I haven't gotten under 90 minutes until the last one when I finally I made some final streamlining changes and got it to about an hour, but it was dragging to about 90 minutes, which is maybe more than most people's attention. So I'm, 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 I've got it down to a, a, a tighter format now. And once I'm done with that, I'm happy to take questions and answers and, um, uh, uh, and do as much as I possibly can. I have my volume maximized and I'm speaking about as loudly as I can and sustained where I'm sorry if anybody's having trouble um, hearing me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of doing the best I can from where I am. Um, so anyway, but questions and answers on uh, as, as, as long as anybody has them. Um, I am, as I said, I'm, a, I'm primarily a writer, editor, and publisher. Uh, right now, I work for a major uh, telecommunications firm as a writer. Uh, I've written a number of books. I've written uh, many, many technical articles. Uh, my background is mostly in consumer and business electronics and the development of telecom. So this is all right in my, uh, right in my, my uh, home plate district as far as the, the technical issues. I've, I've designed uh, video and satellite equipment. 
Um, and I have evolved mostly in the last several years into a writer on consumer issues, which is why I'm concerned about the, the actual uh, the actual consumer end of it rather than just the technical end. Uh, that's my, uh, my site on consumer issues. If you're interested in a rather radical take on what it means to be a consumer in 2021, you might find it interesting. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that area uh, much, but you might find it amusing. I am an independent speaker. I'm not representing any company and I'm not shilling for anybody's stock. Uh, I don't own any GameStop stock, nor would I buy any. Um, uh, I, I just, when I, if I'm enthusiastic about a particular product or a particular service in this, uh, it's because I've found them to be exceptional. And that's all I'm doing is passing it along on a community level. I'm not uh, shilling for anybody at all. Uh, for my family and I, I cut the cable well over 10 years ago, uh, back when it was more difficult to do and required more technical expertise, and we've never missed it. So questions, um, I'm, you're happy to, uh, please, please do enter any questions you have in chat, and I, I do glance at it as I go, and if it's something that's relevant to what I'm talking about, I'll work it in and try to answer it. Um, generally, I get to everything you're probably going to ask. Uh, in the live sessions, there tended to be a, a, a thing, uh, I'd be 10 minutes in and someone would ask about something that I was going to get to, and it would get a little chaotic because I tried to politely answer all the questions. So um, go ahead and enter your questions. Um, I'll, I'll pay attention to them. Uh, and uh, and then basically at the end, I'll review them. And if people have remaining questions, I will get to those as well. Uh, all of the information that I present is on my website, nitropress.com slash CTC. Uh, there's a whole bunch of URLs and web uh, websites and things like that. You don't have to frantically write them down. Uh, some, one of them is about 40 characters long. You'd be writing until tomorrow. Uh, all of that is on my website. Uh, so, so you can only make notes on whatever's of interest to you. You don't have to frantically try to take a transcript of what I'm saying. So let's start with some basic terms and concepts. Uh, I Some of this may be very simple to some of you, but I found in giving the live presentations, I get halfway through and people didn't really have a clear idea of what the difference between internet and Wi-Fi was. So let's, let's just make sure we're all starting on the same page. The internet is the whole global network that connects everything. And it's the wired service usually that comes to your house. Uh, some of you, particularly out there, might have satellite service. Same thing. Uh, it's basically, it's the, it's the pipeline out to the rest of the world. Wi-Fi is a wireless network that's usually within your house or your business. There is public Wi-Fi that, that, that covers larger areas, but it's still the same thing. If the internet connects to a Wi-Fi distribution point and that's how you connect to it. You're two different things. Uh, in fact, you can have a Wi-Fi network without being connected to the internet if you like. Streaming is video and audio entertainment from the web. And it's kind of an outdated term. I won't go into the reasons why it's, 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 it's as outdated now kind of as, as dialing a phone. Uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't really refer to a specific kind of technology anymore. It had a reason for being called that. It, just, it's, it means that the, the information is coming, is, is streaming down to you rather than being downloaded in a big chunk. And when I say cable, I don't mean everything that Comcast or Charter or Cox provides because they've, they've become multi-tentacle. They, they offer many, many things. I don't mean everything a cable company does. I'm specifically talking about cable TV. So I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, when, when I say streaming versus cable or I say cable does this, I'm talking pretty much specifically about cable TV the way it used to be. So cable, I won't go into this too much. I, I used to go into a lot about what why why cable was a failed business, and frankly, who cares? Um, they they're a business that got, uh, in theory, they they could they they they're a public utility because they had to roll out a physical structure through a town or through a region. Uh, they were they were they were they they ran in, they fell into the category of being a public utility where they were allowed to make a profit by using public space and, and, and being a monopoly, but they had to answer to, you know, the local town or, the, or local regulators or whatever. But they've managed to kind of jigger the way that they charge uh, to really squeeze excess money out of you. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Uh, hardly anyone can just have basic cable and be happy with it. You have to add one more tier. You have to add one more package. You know, you want something for your kids, so you you pay extra for a package of 20 kids channels, only two of which they watch. And you want sports, so you get 37 sports channels, including, you know, Tierra del Fuego and soccer. Uh, but you know, you got it because that's the only way you can get ESPN. So they keep kind of chiseling you, and there's no way to get the the, the 10 channels you really want without paying for a bunch of things. And that's just the start of it. Um, their equipment, we'll talk about a little bit. Their equipment is junk, and they charge you for it, uh, charge you way too much for it, and. You can argue with them, you know, when the, when the, when the, when, the, when your teaser rates run out, you can call up and you can go argue, 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 and they'll give you another six months, or they'll give you HBO free for six months, 
it's like trying to win on a used car dealer. You can't do it. Um, they've they've kind of got you, and sooner or later they stop even giving you any bargain because they know you don't have any choice. So anyway, cable failed business model. Let's see what's better. So how do you get rid of cable? And the answer is you really, you really can't. Most of you, um, uh, I'm surprised the size of this. When I I I I, I do my homework and you know I, I found Salisbury was a rather small town and I figured this would be a rather small one of the smaller sessions. You know, the fact that there's 100 and, you know, I don't know what we're up to here, 150 people. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that you're coming from kind of all over that tri-state corner. So there's going to be a lot of differences. Some of you may be in different cable zones and may have different options, and I'll try to accommodate that. But in general, in most towns in Connecticut, you don't have many choices. Uh, you have one cable provider, and if you're lucky, you have um, uh, Frontier or one of those companies providing an alternate service uh, through DSL, which is a different technology. And pretty much everyone has access through the uh, satellite providers, Hughes and Viasat. And I usually strongly disre disrecommend those because of the complexity. But given that you folks are kind of scattered across uh, territory, some of you may not even have decent uh, cable uh, um, if you're if you're in a particular particularly country corner. So satellite may be one of your options. One, you're one of the few sessions that I'm going to actually going to talk about the satellite a little bit. But you can beat, but you can't get rid of cable. You can't get rid of it because you have to have internet. You have to have broadband come to you somehow. But you can beat it into submission. And the basic thing is, if you're not uh, letting them control your cable, your visual stuff, your channels, they, they can't remap the channels, they can't add them, they can't jigger around the different uh, packages and stuff. If they're doing nothing but bringing you a plain old data pipeline, uh, they can't they can't yank a chain anymore. They haven't. I've, I've, that's where I've been for 12 years. I never have any any contact with Comcast except to pay the bill, and they don't ever bother my, any any other part of my my experience. So that's that's the goal. You can't get rid of them, but you can beat them into submission and, and control the cost. Of them. So the alternative is what I call ITV, uh, internet TV, independent TV, and it is inexpensive. Uh, it can start with being free. Uh, uh, and to consider it free, you have to kind of rearrange your expectations. If you think of your internet service as being part of your cable bill, you're going to have to keep paying that. But on the other hand, um, internet is a universal service. It, it brings everything to you. It's not, when you pay for cable, you can do exactly one thing with it. You can turn it on and watch TV. With internet, of course, you can connect to anything, uh, anything anywhere in the world, net neutrality aside. Um, and so you have to think of it maybe as being, instead of being part of your cable bill, it's, it's a household utility. You need it for all of your communication, maybe for your phones, maybe for uh, for sessions like this, for your information, and you can move all of your video and entertainment over onto it at zero cost. So um, the other advantage it brings is that it brings uh, cost control. You only pay for what you want to watch. You don't have to subscribe to great huge blocks of channels and great and and contract for twelve months for HBO and so forth. That uh, subscriptions tend to be month to month if there are any, and there are many many free options and. Uh, a vast amount of is pay-per-view, uh, where if you want to watch a movie, you pay a few dollars to watch the movie. You don't pay $15 a month for HBO and still will only watch one or two movies for that, for that rather large amount of money. Um, streaming can supplement cable. You don't have to go from one to the other. Uh, you, you, can, you can add streaming right now. In fact, I'm going to tell you a number of ways you can do it as soon as I stop talking. Um, and uh, you can explore it while keeping cable. And there's and sometimes there's a there's a balance. Like particularly people who wanted to keep a lot of the sports channels, uh, which were difficult. It was difficult to get sports coverage back in 2017, other than from cable. But you could reduce cable to a very very minimal, inexpensive package and get all of the premium and all of the extra stuff on streaming. So you could still take advantage of it. I do have kind of a protocol I recommend if you're going to do that. Uh, um, basically, it's give streaming a shot. Don't just keep relying on cable, but they can go simultaneously. So um, is it a better alternative? I, I used to go on and on about this. Obviously, it's a better alternative. Um, you choose, you know, not, not only is it uh, lower cost, uh, better a better cost model, uh, but you choose what you want to watch when you want to watch it. It's not like um, cable where you have to uh, record things. You have to stay on top of what, you know, uh, program schedule. Uh, and you don't have to have 500 channels to watch two of them. So it's, it's a very, it's, 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 it's a cafeteria uh, idea. You can pick and choose exactly what you want. If you don't like lime jello, don't pick up lime jello. There is basically no recording. You don't have to record anything. Everything, everything on, on streaming, um, there is a new model of, 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 of live stream channels, but 
by and large, nearly all, all streaming is, it's pre-recorded. It's like Netflix. Uh, everything is on demand. If you want to watch a program, you go to that channel, you pick that program, you watch it, you stop it, you rewind it, you watch it again, you watch it next week. It's always pre-recorded for you. So you don't have to have a DVR. You don't have to use TiVo, which to me is one of the great scams, paying to be able to tune your TV. Uh, and it's, it's just everything is out there waiting for you whenever you want it, uh, uh, regardless of what time or, or uh, what their programming is. And when I gave this in 2017, the, the choices were approaching the width of what cable offers. Now, I think they greatly exceed it. Uh, the model has sort of has reached something of maturity. And not only is everything that's on cable now on streaming, but there are many, many other choices there. It's, it's like the internet itself. You know, there may only be 500 uh, model railroaders of a particular stripe in the whole country, but they can all connect on, a, on an internet forum. Now there are channels for uh, very specific types of knitting and crocheting for very specific types of hobbies, like very, very specific subsets of model railroading. Uh, there, there's everything out there, uh, and you can add that. Most of those are actually free. And the big thing is you can do this with no commercials at all. If you do this right, you can never see another TV commercial as long as you live. Um, uh, it's, it's not practical to get quite to zero, but you can certainly reduce it. For instance, most TV on streaming is handled by Hulu, uh, who came along years ago uh, kind of doing, uh, they kind of swept up TV that nobody else wanted and put it on the internet. Now they are the big source of virtually everything. Uh, programs run on whatever their native channel is, and the next day they're on Hulu. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful service. It's about eight bucks a month. If you pay another four bucks, they take away all the commercials, which to me was always worth $4. Not only are you losing the commercials, but you get to watch your programs about 20% faster. So let's take a quick look. This, this I'm going to skim over because um, I, um, at first, one of the things I do for homework is I do look up this information for the, uh, uh, for the area. And I did, and it was pretty dismal. But now I realize probably most of you are from a much larger uh, geographic region. So I'll throw it out a little bit. That's broadcast television, OTA, over the air. Um, about 20 years ago, TV was improved enormously by going digital. It's, it's hard to express how much it changed from the old days. But almost no one was paying attention because everybody got their, their even their local channels through cable. Well, in most areas, it's worth looking at uh, if you have any, any, any channels you can receive because they're free. And they are higher quality than what you get over cable. If you're watching programs on a local affiliate station, if you go to put up an antenna and look at them, they are much, much better. They're true HD instead of being compressed. However, I did run a thing on, on, uh, um, on Salisbury, and your reception up there is zero. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't know. However, um, uh, there is a way to look up what you get. And because you are across probably a big region, what I suggest you do is go to the, that long uh, URL there. The FCC maintains a service where you can look it up down to your address. And not only does it know signal strengths and where antennas are and stuff, but it knows something about the topography. Uh, if you look over there on the right, that's what I got in Tolland, nothing. Uh, there were a few people who were very high on the right ridge facing towards Hartford, and they could pick up some, some stations that, that most of us could not. So if, you, you know, if you're very high on a ridge somewhere, you'll have better options than, than your neighbor who's only 100 feet away but is 50 feet lower. So we'll take a real quick look at this. Um, uh, it's, 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 probably not, it's probably not an option for most of you, so I'm not going to uh, spend too much time on it. But let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let me switch the share. If I can find it, there it is. OK, everybody should be seeing my browser now. This is the FCC site. What you do is you can enter anything down to your street address. I'll just go ahead and enter the Salisbury uh, zip code. And when you look, that's pretty bad. Uh, the, best, the best channels, if you look at the, when we go back to the, 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 the uh, slide, I'll show you like right here and here in Aurora, we're, uh, Denver's actually very flat, for those of you who don't know. We're not in the mountains. The mountains are over there. We're flat. Uh, and a big city on the flat, I've got many, many, many very strong channels. Uh, you have no green channels, no yellow channels, and those channels are probably not received. The brown channels are probably not uh, receivable with anything less than about 100 foot antenna. So for all practical purposes, you don't. But I do recommend that all of you uh, go to the site. Like I said, it's on, it's on, you can, it's on my, uh, um, you can just go to my site and click on the link there. Enter your address. You might be surprised, especially if you're further up towards the corner of the state, uh, you may be able to get a few. If you get any channels at all, it's worth putting up an antenna. They're free. So anyway, we'll go back to, uh, 
uh, the boring part. Boring about it. There it is. See here in here in Aurora, I have uh, quite a bit, quite a few channels. In Tolland, we had nothing. So I won't say any more about it. Um, it basically it is worth checking out, but um, it probably won't apply to most of you. And that's how we're going to go. That's that, that's my cue to go over to the browser. But we already did that. So okay, now we've we, we've exhausted that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, basically the technical basics. And what I'm talking about here is. The technical basics for doing this on your couch. I'm assuming that you basically want to replace cable. You want to come in, you want to flop down on your couch, you want to pick up the remote, you want to watch TV. That's not the limit of streaming. You can do streaming on virtually any device. You can do it on a phone, you can do it on a tablet, you can do it on your computer. Uh, anything that can talk to the internet and has a screen on it, you can stream on. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's not really uncommon. I will sometimes watch most of a movie on my big screen and then I'll decide to go to bed and I'll curl up with my tablet and watch the, watch the rest of it on the tablet uh, in bed because it's more comfortable. You can do all of that. It's very, very flexible. Uh, keep that in mind, even though I'm mostly talking about just sort of this straightforward cable experience. The first thing you need is good internet um, access and there's no way around that. You, you have to have the data get to you some way. We'll talk about providers and what you should ask for and how to get it down to a good, um, a, a reasonably inexpensive solution. You do need a TV with an HDMI port. That's virtually any TV of the last 15 or more years. It's the big D-shaped connection uh, that's on the side. Uh, it looks scary, but it's not. Uh, like I said, in the days when you bought a VCR and there were five or six different cables and they all had the same connector and you had to figure out exactly which one went where and you usually got it wrong. Um, and, and so this is easy. Uh, HDMI carries everything. It carries a video, it carries audio, it carries the data that they talk back and forth with. It even carries power for some devices. Um, it's very, very simple. You plug the HDMI cable into the device, you plug the HDMI cable into the TV, and you're done. Um, so, so it looks scary. It's not. It's actually, it's actually a huge benefit. Ooh, you do need some kind of a streaming video device, and that can be a dedicated device, which we will talk about. Uh, it can be a smart TV, uh, and if you have a disc player you bought any time in the last 15 years, it probably has some kind of streaming built into it. Um, if you have, uh, uh, this looks like a big uh, uh, gaming crowd. If you have a, a PS4 or an Xbox, uh, those have uh, streaming built in as well. Uh, and again, you can use any small device. And we'll talk about that in more detail. Uh, you do need a credit card if you're gonna go with any pay services at all. If you want Netflix, if you want Hulu, if you want uh, any of those, uh, they don't have any billing system. Uh, some of them take things like PayPal, but by and large, when you sign up, you have to have a credit card. And I mentioned that because I got into a couple of sessions and I got a long ways down and somebody would ask that question and it kind of changed the whole direction of what I was talking about. So I do emphasize at this, this stage that basically if you want to get into any of the paid services, you do have to have a credit card to get them for billing. So this is, um, this may get way, I, I try not to get too technical on this. I, this is something I spent more time on at one time. Uh, and it's, it's if, this, if this completely, totally throws you, don't worry about it. It's not uh, essential to the rest of the, of the uh, um, discussion. You do have to have good internet. And so what I'm going to do is talk about what constitutes good internet for those who, who grasp it. Uh, and hopefully even, even, even if it's kind of gibberish to you, uh, it'll, it'll give you some points to talk to whoever is going to help you with the technical end of it about what you want. Screaming, uh, by the way, I didn't mention it. This, uh, this little star icon uh, means I have lots and lots and lots more to talk about that uh, on that subject. And you'll see it four or five times in here now. Uh, so if if you want to know more about this topic, um, I can talk a great deal about it. It is, however, it's a whole session itself. I could talk for two hours and still not tell you everything you need to know. So that's why I'm trying to keep this kind of short. So if this is all complete gibberish, uh, have a cup of coffee and uh, we'll get back to the, 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 the simple stuff in about two minutes. Streaming depends on the quality of your net provider more than anything else. Um, you have to have high reliability. Uh, if they go out for an hour uh, every Wednesday, or if they drop out for a couple of minutes every evening, uh, you're going to find your video experience very, very frustrating because you need, obviously, you know, very continuous, very smooth connection for video to come in without being interrupted or what's called buffered. Uh, I'm sure you've watched things where a movie all of a sudden comes to a stop and then it goes, what it is, it ran out of data. Uh, so it has to wait for more data to come down the pipe, uh, or it just cuts out altogether and you lose the connection. So you want very high reliability, which I think both of the providers in your area do. Um, more important, you want something uh, kind of technical. You want low, you want low latency, uh, low. Uh, you want a short ping. You want low lag, and that's a little different from speed. It's how fast the system, how fast the network responds to you. 
if you've been on a, on a website, you click a button and bang, a page comes up. You click a button, bang, page comes up. You click a button and nothing happens for a few seconds and then bang, page comes up. That's lag. It's not the speed because the page comes in very, very fast when it, when it gets there, but it takes an appreciable amount of time for your request for the page or like a, a, a video device's request for more data to get down the pipe and then for the information to come back. Lag, lag is, 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 is what messes everything up. It isn't usually speed. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's lag. So you want, you want, a, uh, you want a, a provider that has a very low latency, very low ping. And again, fortunately, I think multiple providers in your area are pretty good on that. I think the surprise to most people is you don't need high speed. Uh, moderate speeds are plenty. And um, I've got a whole panel on that in a minute. 25 to 50 megabits is plenty for any household in America. Uh, the very high speeds that they try to sell you are uh, like selling you special finishes and glass treatment on cars. They're almost completely useless. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then once you have those, what you want is the lowest cost. If you're fortunate enough to have multiple providers, um, you want whoever will do it for the least. So choosing a provider, uh, you look, you locate all the providers that service your location. And that's something like trying to get competitive prices on fuel oil, which I always found very frustrating in Holland. Uh, you know, when you start of the season, you want to sign a contract. It's a pain in the neck to find out what the competitive prices are. You have to call all of them. You have to listen to a, a sales pitch. And there's a few places that pull the information together for you, but there isn't really any consistent, uh, there isn't like one site you can go to to look it up and, and get good information. The same is true, unfortunately, of broadband. There is a site, we'll go to it in a minute, uh, that does try to pull the information together, but it is commercially driven. So it's only about 90% trustworthy. Uh, but the difference is you can talk to the providers who don't provide cable. You don't have to go to an alternate cable company you can go to anybody who provides broadband. And in a lot of communities, that opens it up to providers you never would have considered before because you wanted cable. So it didn't matter what their what their internet offering was, they didn't have cable channels, so you didn't look at them. Now, a lot of communities have things like fiber, um, like Pollen put in a fiber network that I helped uh, uh, oversee uh, and, and implement. Uh, and and uh, there's there's a lot of alternatives that don't, that don't have anything to do with quote, cable, but they'll bring you fast internet very cheap. So we'll look at what you have available in a minute. And then you want to reject their equipment if you can. Uh, use your own equipment, buy your own modem and router and Wi-Fi stuff because the stuff they give you is, has many, many flaws. Mostly it's junk, they're charging you too much for it, and it's not secure. A big issue, uh, like in, in, uh, this was a kind of a non-issue back in 2017 because, because nobody was doing it, but um, uh, two or three sessions has typically asked about this, uh, are data caps, how much data you can pull down on your monthly Thing. And there's a lot of talk about it, a lot of a lot of agitation, a lot of people are upset about it. It's generally not a worry for most residential users. Uh, the data cap is typically um, uh, a terabyte, which is a thousand gigabytes, which is, as we'll see, a whole heck of a lot of video. The people who complain are people who are generally people who are abusing it, people who are doing something like running a business server, and they might blow through two, three, four terabytes of data. Uh, and then it's like everything else like that. They're kind of messing it up for everybody else and they're forcing the company to put a data cap on, 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 the, on the service so that they can hold the overall price down. It's not a bad thing. It's just something that we should have been able to avoid. But generally that, that, that data cap, uh, most households will get nowhere near it. It's not worth worrying. And then if you, good Wi-Fi is an asset. If you don't have Wi-Fi in your house, um, this is a good time to consider a good Wi-Fi router uh, adapter so that you can use phones, tablets, computers, um, all the devices that, that use Wi-Fi and do a good job of putting it in. That's as much as I'm going to talk about technically. Um, I can go on down to, I mean, I, I can get into hard nuts and bolts discussions if anybody really wants it. Uh, but generally, what, it, what pardon me, the takeaway on this is you need good internet service. If you don't have the understanding to do it and the provider can't do a good job and you don't have a 13-year-old nephew who can do it for you, um, you will need somebody to put in good internet for you. Speed, this is something, uh, even if you're not terribly technical, you know, you probably will be dealing with, uh, you know, the sales end of things like that. Internet speed is probably the most grossly oversold commodity that, uh, there is in this whole spectrum and stuff. They've been, the, 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 the companies have been pushing faster and faster and faster speeds and 150 megabit, 300 megabit, 400 with super burst, one gigabit byte fiber. Nobody needs that much speed. I'm a very, very heavy internet user. I move huge files back and forth for video and, and, and data and stuff like that. And I have a very modest service. It, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, why they like to why they sell to you is if they can charge you a fortune 
because you're, that you're, you're never going to use it. So they're basically charging you for something that they never even have to put to buy. Uh, it's like paying somebody a whole fortune for, in, in case you run out of fuel oil, they'll bring you some, but you never do run out of fuel oil, so you're paying them for nothing. Um, low end service, but at this point, uh, when, when I talked in 2017, there were a lot of very, very slow services, uh, three megabit, six megabit. That might've been a little marginal. Uh, now, bottom end service is typically in the 20 to 40 megabit range. You can go with the cheapest, slowest, most economical lifeline, um, boy, you're a cheap son of a gun um, uh, service from almost any provider. You don't need anything faster. Uh, most speeds over 40 to 50 megabits are much faster than you'll need. Don't pay for them. Here, I, I, when, I, when I signed up with Comcast, I think I was getting 45. It was fine. Because of the nature of, of, of the thing, it's, it's increased every year. I think I'm now getting about um, 90 megabits, and which is, you know, I, I'm not paying any extra for it, and I wouldn't, but hey, get it free. To maximize service and reliability, you want to use your own equipment. Um, they, they, they will provide the equipment, sure. Uh, they will tell you if you use your own equipment that somehow bad things will happen and they won't be able to help you and stuff. None of that is true. Generally for cable, uh, there's basically one model of, of, of modem they use. Uh, it's an industry standard. Uh, it's about as reliable as an engine block. New ones cost about $60. You can get refurbished or used ones for about 30. They're perfectly worth buying. And they charge you five to $10 a month in rental. Do the math, you're paying for that device every six months. And, and, and a lot of times it isn't even the good version. It's some cheap junk they got by the crate load from, from China. They don't care if it breaks, they'll just send you another one. Uh, so you want better equipment and you can buy it. And I can talk at great length about that as well. Particularly the router, the, the router is the part that sort of handles all of your information and separates their network from your network. Um, not only are there, there is their equipment tend to be poor, uh, it tends to be very poor in security. Uh, they can get through it. Uh, they can go, they can from the outside, from where, from their central um, network uh, thing, they can go through that router, through that firewall, right into your computer. Now, Comcast wouldn't do that, but there are other entities who might ask them to. And all you have to do to block that is use your own equipment that has different protocols and uses your own passwords and doesn't have an administrative backdoor. Uh, that's a big deal to me. I'm not paranoid. I'm not, uh, I don't believe in giant conspiracies, but I sure like to know that nobody can get through my router into my system. Uh, they'd have all, they'd find all my dog pictures. So anyway, uh, that, so that's pretty technical. Um, I, I'm, I'm, the rest of this is a lot simpler. So everybody, everybody who's, who's worried about the technical level of this, I don't, uh, that's as much as I'm going to get unless somebody asks about it. But over on the right there, this typical media speeds. Uh, this is why speed is not important. HD video only needs six megabits per second. Uh, so if you have four people watching HD video simultaneously, you only need 24 megabits per second, which is, uh, um, which is well within the floor that I've suggested. It's only if you get into 4K video. 4K video does take a lot more speed. If you're gonna have multiple users of that, you'll kind of need to think a little bit, but even then the bottom speed typically accommodates two to three 4K streams at a time. And if it overloads, what happens is it just slows down a little bit. You get slightly less video quality, it doesn't break. So paying for super, super, super fast uh, um, internet is simply a waste of money. Um, I can talk more about that again if somebody wants. I, I, I don't want to go too far down that tech route. So let's take a look at what you do have. Let me uh, switch the share here again. To something useful, where is it? There it is, okay. Too many choices. So now we'll go from uh, FCC, we'll go over to, this is um, a company called Broadband Now. This is a commercial uh, service, so they're maybe a little less trustworthy, uh, but they do list everybody. Uh, and you, what you can do is, again, since you're coming from kind of a distributed uh, uh, geographical area, you will want to enter your own address into this uh, to get a very specific answer. Again, I will just go ahead and use uh, the Salisbury uh, um, uh, zip code as a, as a general example. And it does this thing, it makes it look like it's uh, really, really looks like it's working hard. It's just, it's all in practice. So your choices are pretty much what most of Connecticut has. You have um, Xfinity there, looks like um, um, almost 100% of, of Salisbury has it. I, you know, you're in your, if you're in outlying areas, you'll have different providers. Cable companies came in on a community basis. Uh, most of you are, have probably been around long enough to remember when it came in. And what they did was they, did, they couldn't just roll it out across the state. They had to go to each community and, and make a separate agreement. And, and that's, that's why it varies so much. 
Uh, you can have, I, I, there's towns where there's three different cable companies that all butt right up against each other because they were originally different communities and, and signed different contracts originally. Uh, so Comcast, Comcast really technically is one of the best. Uh, they are also, as I was saying to Lawrence uh, before this, when I gave this in 2017, there was a uh, there was a recent study by a university, and the number one most hated company, most hated consumer company in America was Comcast. Big surprise. But as a technical company, if you weed them down to just providing your internet, they're not too bad. So it's not a bad choice. The other choice is Frontier. Uh, they use a different technology called DSL. And what that does is it uses the old Ma Bell copper wiring for phones, uh, which for most people is no longer in use. Uh, and originally it was very slow. Uh, it, it's, it, was, it took a long time to get through about the three to six megabit range, which was okay 10 years ago and now is, is simply too slow for most things. They have come up with uh, things. They do have speeds that are comparable to cable, 100 megabits. Uh, they do have reasonable, when I, when I first came to Denver, I went with a company called CenturyLink for DSL, and I had uh, 40 megabit for about $30 a month. It was very reasonable. The problem with DSL is you can't use your own equipment. Cable uses, uh, cable in general uses um, very common, very inexpensive equipment that consumers can buy and use and stuff. DSL is more technically sophisticated. Uh, the, the modems and so forth are uh, more narrow. Uh, there's, there, there's, there's many different standards and, and uh, I like one of the reasons I switched away from uh, DSL here was I could have bought my own modem and stuff. It was uh, there were about two hundred and fifty dollars, far too expensive. That's two years rental, uh, and so there's no good option. So that's something to keep thinking about. If you do go with their lower uh, their their service, it's perfect. It's, it's perfectly good in every technical respect, but you can't use your own equipment unless you want to throw a lot of money in it. And the other two providers are the usual ones. So these guys provide uh, service virtually across the country, so they're always on the list. Uh, Viasat and HughesNet, they're satellite based. And uh, those of you who don't have a good cable option or are just you know, further, further out in the country, uh, you may not even have, I, I assume you have copper phone wiring, but uh, you probably, you, you may be outside of uh, uh, cable areas or uh, these guys may be a better uh, deal for you. They're worth evaluating. Uh, they do have some technical drawbacks. Uh, again, you have to use their equipment. Not everybody can afford uh, their own satellite receiving station. Uh, they are kind of expensive, uh, but they are a good option if you don't have any better wired option coming to your house. Again, uh, go to this site, enter your address, and it will tell you exactly what your options are, and you can work from there. So that's the, that's the exciting stuff. Okay. So basically now we've assumed that you've evaluated you know, over-the-air broadcast TV, which you may or may not be able to get uh, in your area. Uh, but we're assuming you have this absolutely great internet uh, connection to do something with. So what are you going to do with it? You're going to stream TV. So the best, there, you need some device like a cable box. You need, you need something that takes the internet and turns it into TV. It's a streaming device. You need one device per, per viewing location. Some um, uh, some people may remember the uh, sort of the high the high water mark of, of video when you could put a lot of money into your video system and you bought a very expensive TV and you bought a five hundred dollar VCR and and you know maybe a thousand dollar disc player and you hooked them up with way too many cables and then it was and then what you did was things if you wanted to watch up in the bedroom you could run a cable up there and you could use remote to the disc would still be in the living room but you could watch upstairs it was all from one unit some cable units work like that too not streaming. Streaming, basically, you need a device everywhere you're going to watch. Fortunately, they're cheap. Um, but basically, if you have one in the living room, you have one up in your bedroom, uh, your kids have one, uh, they're all completely, the only thing they're sharing is the internet connection. They don't interact in any way. They don't uh, rely on each other. Totally independent. And a streaming device can be any of these devices. It can be any, any smart device with a screen, a uh, computer, uh, a tablet, a smartphone. Uh, uh, so you can do that basically right now. You can do it while I'm talking. You can get out your phone and start playing streaming. Um, I won't even think it's rude. Uh, you can use any computer, tablet, or smartphone with a TV. There's two ways to do that. One is you can use a cable. We actually did that. There was a uh, back back when there was one program that was only on a web site, and so I bought a rather expensive cable to connect an iPad to the TV so we could watch on a big TV. That's more or less obsolete. Generally, you can either watch on a small device or there's a way to watch on a big, big one. There's another technique called casting. It's very technical. I can, I can talk about it at great length. If you have a nice phone, if you have a nice tablet and you want to use that as your 
pardon me, it's your streaming device, you can take the signal and you can throw it to a TV. So you call up something on YouTube, you tap the casting uh, button, and there it is on the TV. A little on the technical side, I can talk about that more if anybody's interested. The, mo the most common thing for most people we use is streaming that's built into a smart TV. And I have a smart TV in quotes because I think they're stupid. Um, uh, or that disc player or a game console uh, uh, that has it built in. And that's something else. As soon as you stop listening to me, if you have any of those, you can go over and start messing around with what's built into your smart TV or what's built into your disc player and just get a feel for what streaming does. Uh, don't have to wait till tomorrow to go buy a streaming device somewhere. The bad is these are pretty limited devices. Even smart TVs, generally the, like I have a, a unavoidably have a smart TV that I, I don't use for anything. The menu is very slow. The options are very slow. And what happens is those apps like the Netflix app, the Hulu app, uh, they get outdated. They don't work anymore. Uh, and the companies, you know, Vizio and LG and, and uh, uh, Samsung uh, simply don't update them after a few years. There's no economic incentive for them to do so. So you end up with a TV that has fewer and fewer and fewer smarts. Uh, I don't recommend anybody buy a smart TV as a smart TV. Um, it's hard to buy a TV that doesn't have a smart hub or whatever into it now, but buy it as a good TV. Don't, don't worry about the smart features because they're probably junk. Um, the best way to do it is with a device that's actually dedicated to doing uh, streaming, a streaming device, a streaming appliance, uh, just like having a cable box. Uh, the good advantage, is, the, the good um, uh, thing about them is they're cheap. Uh, the better thing about them is they work very, very simply. You sit down, you turn it on, you watch. Uh, when I started doing this uh, with a computer that was attached to the TV, every single time we went to watch it, something, it needed to reboot. It needed to upload it. There was a, there was, I had to go download a new driver. I had to reconfigure something. I had to reset the Wi-Fi. It was a huge pain in the butt. That's not what it is anymore. These little boxes do it quietly and fast and, and, and with absolutely no fuss. It's the best way to do it. And as I say, they are quite inexpensive. The basics of how they work is, uh, this is this is my own silly uh, uh, brand, the Streaming Extreme Box. Uh, you basically have internet that comes in and ideally you want wired ethernet coming into it. And I'll explain, uh, I, I'm, I rearranged my slides, I don't remember where I said. Generally, if you have a wired connection to it, you never have any trouble with it. If you have wired Wi-Fi, Sooner or later, you'll go to watch something, particularly probably when you're rushed and tired and grumpy, and it will want you to reset the password or reset something, or you'll have to go reset the Wi-Fi router. And I just, I, I, I enjoy Wi-Fi for what it does well, uh, but I really dislike it for the unreliability. So if you can run wire to your to where your TV is, it will be uh, worth all the effort. So internet goes in, and what comes out is one HDMI cable that you plug into the box, and you plug in your TV, and it shows up on your TV. And that's all there is to it. Uh, they're very, very simple. If you have a remote, you can integrate that remote with um, uh, uh, a, if you have like a, a master remote or a universal remote, you can integrate that very easily. Uh, you can run an app on uh, any type of phone or tablet that makes it very easy. You can do things like YouTube searches and then say, okay, play that. Um, what these are is they're little, they're little tiny computers, obviously, and they usually run Android. And what they're like is they're basically like an Android phone with no screen. They look, once you get them up and running, it's exactly the same experience. There's apps um, and it works the same as, as, as an iPhone as well. Uh, you find the apps you want. You wanna watch Netflix, you install the, the Netflix app. You wanna watch Amazon Prime, you install the Amazon app. You wanna watch Hulu, you install the, the Hulu app. There's thousands upon thousands of these apps available. Um, Nearly all of the down, uh, there used to be some that were only SD standard broadcast resolution, and now they're all HD as far as I know. Uh, a growing majority of them and all the best ones also do 4K. This is someplace where spending a little extra money is, is worthwhile. It's a very small amount. Uh, rather than spend $35 on one that might be obsolete, maybe you don't have a 4K TV now, maybe you will next year. These devices have a very long lifespan. Uh, so if you get a 4K TV next year or the year after it, you'll already have a 4K box to go with it. It's worth spending that extra 10 or 15 or $20 to have it now. Um, I have a, I have one, I have a, a current model one here. Uh, I left one in Connecticut. My son still uses it. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's so old. Uh, I mean, I, I mean it's, 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 I think it's 11 years old and it still works absolutely perfectly. The company updates it regularly. The, app, the apps are, are, are updated regularly. It, it, I said, this is, this is I, as a consumer advocate, I don't usually say spend more money, but this is something where spending, buying a little bit better uh, is, is, will pay off. 
uh, uh, down the road. Uh, you'll also see, uh, particularly if you've gone out there and read articles that were absolutely confusing and baffling, they go on and on and on about speed. It has nothing to do with the video or the audio or the performance. They're talking about how fast the little computer works and how fast the menus work. Uh, you click on something and, and something, I mean, the next menu comes up very, very fast. Uh, on the old ones, including the one that's now 11, 12 years old, you click a button and it takes just a second for the menu to come up. That's not about speed. It's not really very important. And the, the blue line there, I, I, I got surprised by a question and in, in thing. Uh, someone someone uh, wanted to know, you know, how, how much do these cost to keep running? And the answer is zero. Uh, streaming boxes work on the 100% down, 0% for life model. Uh, you buy them and you never have to pay another dime for them to operate. Uh, you do have to have internet. Uh, you do have to pay for any subscription services, but there is no, it isn't like TiVo where, you know, you buy it and then you have to pay $15 a month for them to keep telling you how to use it. Uh, like I said, one of the great scams, I think. But so these are a buy once, use forever. The primary and premier and really only brand uh, that's out there is um, uh, is Roku. They more or less originated this idea. They were the ones who took uh, the complexity of using like a computer program or a, a complex device and telling things to it and boiled it all down into a little tiny box that you plug in and it just works. Uh, they're still the best for a number of reasons because they have the widest availability of apps. Uh, everybody plays with them. They're the Switzerland of streaming. There's no corporate friction. There's no competition. They have gotten more and more into running on their own. They're, they've got their own channel now and they have their own commercial set, but they haven't offended anyone else and they don't block anybody else from playing. So um, uh, there are many, many models. Uh, you may even find used ones. Basically, as long as they work, they work. Uh, you don't have to worry about it being outdated or anything. If it plugs in and, and the menu comes up, it works. Uh, so you can buy a new one, you can buy an old one. There are two fundamental types um, from most of the makers of, of boxes. There are sticks and there are boxes. The sticks look like a great big thumb drive. Uh, they have an HDMI connector on the end and you plug it basically directly into the TV. Uh, and that's convenient. They're small, uh, they're portable. Uh, it's nice, uh, big with college students. Uh, they may have one where they, they plug it into the, their little TV in the dorm room and then they unplug it and they take it down and plug it in the common room and watch it with a few people or take it over to a friend's house and plug it in. Um, it's nice to have, if, you, if you're gonna have more than one, uh, it's nice to have one because you can move it from place to place. You can take it over to a friend's house uh, and all of your channels and everything go with you. Uh, so as long as, as long as your neighbor has uh, um, uh, internet service you can tap into, you can plug it in and it's like watching your TV in somebody else's house or at a vacation house or uh, on the road. So that's the use of sticks. Generally, if you're gonna buy just one and it's gonna live in your living room, box a little better. They're a little more expensive um, but they do tend to bring uh, the better uh, video with them. Uh, they do tend to be a little more reliable. They can be a little faster. Uh, and they have features uh, on the last, let me go back to the, uh, uh, the, the prior. Uh, um, if they have one more connection that's kind of nice to have. Uh, connecting these up is a matter of plugging in a, a wall wart and plugging it in for power. Uh, plugging in an ethernet cable, um, like I said, I recommend that uh, over using Wi-Fi. Then you plug in the cable that goes to the TV one of the things the boxes have is they have a USB port. You can plug in a thumb drive. And if there's video or photos on that, you can display them on your TV very easily, just like you, you do on a computer. Uh, my daughter, a few months ago, brought a thumb drive with a bunch of uh, um, 3D uh, ultrasound of my forthcoming grandchild. Uh, and we sat and looked at the uh, looked at them just as if I'd been in a doctor's office with her. Uh, and uh, so it's it just, that's one of the reasons to have a box. They do have that, that one extra feature. Uh, and that can be a very nice, uh, nice thing to have. You have a whole bunch of vacation photos you want to bore people with. Uh, you can plug it right in and uh, tell them about the great vacation you had while they stayed home. This I'm going to only leave up for a minute. I used to go into a long thing about all of the other brands. There are there are other brands besides Roku, uh, and that's the little star means like I could talk at great length about any one of these if anybody has any questions. Um, my comments boil down to I don't recommend any of them. Uh, and they're all for different reasons. Uh, uh, just generally, if you're kind of new to this and you want a simple experience and you want the best, most bang for your buck and you don't want any hassle, go buy a Roku, really. Trust me, uh, you will absolutely never be unhappy with it. The rest of these range from having some issues down to uh, I wouldn't take it on, on a bet. Uh, and one in particular is if you have Comcast, they've probably been hammering you to take their box, the Flex, and it's free and everything. 
Um, basically, it's a Comcast cable box. You are taking a step backwards. You are not cutting the cord. You are simply moving the cord to a different location. Uh, it's rather deceptive. So it's free, but it's not really worth anything. So anyway, like I said, I'm happy to talk about any of these at greater length uh, later on, but the bottom line is if you're gonna buy a streaming device, buy a Roku, the rest of them have Prime. So now we assume you have what one or two OTA channels you can get. You have great um, uh, internet. Uh, you have a streaming box all set up to go and you're looking at the menu. What do you do with it? You go find content. That's actually very, very easy. Um, it, to add content is easy, to find it is a little more complicated. And I used to spend a lot of time on this in the live presentation because it was a little more chaotic. It's completely crazy. Uh, there are so many channels and the, the, the property moves around so much. I'll use one example. If any of you are film fans, you probably know what the Criterion collection is. It's the, it's the releases done by Criterion. Uh, they take um, famous, uh, 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 you know, the, they take the best movies uh, and do a very, very good packaging of it. You know, if you're going to own a copy of Casablanca, you want the Criterion Edition. And for a while, they had nearly all of their movies on a streaming service, and it was simply bundled with Hulu. If you had Hulu, you got 1,100 Criterion movies as part of the package. Well, they scooped those up. They went over to HBO. You had to have HBO to get them. Now I think they're on their own channel. Uh, so if you want the Criterion collection, you have to pay extra for the Criterion channel. Uh, so that's what happens is that this all moves around, and you probably are mostly... Uh, aware of the news last few years, uh, HBO Max, Disney Plus, and Apple TV Plus kind of went out and swept up huge amounts of properties that have been kind of been out there on streaming for a long time. And now each one of them has these large exclusive bodies of stuff, kind of a big step backwards, really. The famous one that everybody was upset about was now if you want to watch any of the Charlie Brown specials, uh, you have to go to Apple TV Plus. Uh, they're, they're, they're no longer available on any of the other uh, services. They're not broadcast. Uh, so, and, and, and we're kind of moving backwards from everything being more and more available. Now everybody's, uh, it's gotten uh, to a very competitive situation where all of these properties are pulling it back. I blame CBS uh, for CBS All Access. They put, uh, you know, they, they, they pulled all of their own properties behind their own paywall. My joke at the time was CBS were just like HBO, but spelled different. And all they have, of course, are their own programs. Uh, and frankly, I don't think Blue Bloods is, is worth paying for. It's a nice program, but uh, I'd rather not pay for it. And then they started putting things behind it, like the new Star Trek series, which you can only see there. Uh, the new Stephen King uh, miniseries is only there. So you end up paying a lot of, we're back to paying for all of these individual chunks to watch things. And it's kind of a move backwards. I don't know what we can do about it. Anyway, this is a kind of a survey of the channels that are available. Uh, and it's the one, one of the places where I can't possibly give you a comprehensive understanding. I can just tell you what's out there, how to find it, and uh, let you go run and find whatever it is you want to watch. So first of all, what is a streaming channel? It's not a channel like a TV channel or even a cable channel. It's more a service like Netflix, um, where you, you, you put in that app or you, um, uh, you subscribe or whatever. You go into catalog, and they might have 20 items, uh, like a, a lot of the very, very small independent channels may only have 20 video items, uh, and they go up to literally hundreds of thousands. Then you pick whatever's on there and you watch it at your own leisure. So uh, you install an app for each one you want, uh, and you find the apps by going to, uh, actually I've got a, a slide that tells how to do that. These are, that, that is probably 95% of streaming. What's come in with like the streaming cable packages and stuff, the actual live broadcast channels have come um, um, uh, to streaming where you have to tune in a particular time. If you can, you have to record it if you want to watch it later. Uh, that's true mostly of, of news, of sports, but a lot of the mid-tier cable channels, uh, you know, things like Lifetime and Discovery and, and, and History Channel and so forth have gone to this model where it's it's just like they're broadcasting over cable. It's not, you don't go in and select what you want to watch, you watch whatever's on in that time slot. That's still only about 5% of the market, so it's not Thank you. And then the, we'll talk, uh, I've, I've got more about it, but the, the, the big move over the last couple of years was streaming cable. It, it started that absolutely everybody was going to their own streaming app. You could get the Discovery app, you could get the History app, you could get the Oxygen app. Uh, and then it kind of backed up and the last big uh, block of mid-tier mid cable, <laughs> mid cable stuff all decided to go with cable packages instead where you pay someone like Sling or Hulu or uh, YouTube for 50 channels, 45 of which you will never watch. 
So unfortunately, we've kind of gone backwards again. I don't know what to do about it. We were on the verge of, of having actual real individual digital choice, and now we're kind of losing out to uh, the next iteration of the cable monster again. But you can avoid those, those services entirely if you like. So there are basically four types of, of internet streaming provider. I've already talked a little about this. Uh, there are the monthly flat fee guys, Netflix. You pay them uh, anywhere between about uh, 9 and $18 a month, and you have access to absolutely everything. It's all you can eat. You can watch 24-7, uh, 30 days, whatever you paid for. Everything they've got is, is there for you to watch. Uh, that's Netflix, uh, Hulu, uh, Amazon Video, Amazon Video Prime, uh, others. There's also the pay-per-view catalog. The big one there is Vudu. They have virtually every movie ever released, uh, and they have almost every television program ever released. And you simply pay for whatever you watch. Uh, movies are typically two to five dollars. Uh, TV programs are about two dollars an episode, or you can get the whole uh, season for uh, 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 for about twenty dollars. The good thing with those is you own them. Uh, if you if you buy a whole season of say Blue Bloods, uh, you basically own it forever. You can watch it forever. Then there's the monthly subscription single stores. These have gotten a little blurry because HBO used to have nothing but HBO stuff. Now, of course, they're HBO Max and they brought in a lot of other materials. So they've become more of a competitor with something like Netflix. They still specialize mostly in their own stuff, but they have a lot more. It is a premium price around $15 a month for, you know, Netflix is $10 a month. Uh, HBO is 15 for a smaller, if maybe better quality set of, of things. Uh, Showtime, Stars, CBS All Access. There's there's about a dozen of them that are in this. Uh, the big ones are of course HBO Max um, and uh, Disney Plus, and there's free. Uh, there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of free channels out there, and they range from uh, hilarious junk. I have one that is a favorite of mine uh, that is it just shows just how bad um, this kind of thing can get. I watch it occasionally, just kind of reset the bar very low. Uh, he has about a dozen videos that are just most in up stuff I've ever seen in my life. And then there are big ones. There's Pluto TV, there's Crackle, there's Popcorn. These have literally tens of thousands of programs. And for every B-grade horror movie or uh, leftover Italian movie from 1943, they have big name stuff. Uh, they are ad supported. Uh, some of them are ad supported in exactly the way you'd think they'd be. Uh, so I tried to watch something the other night, an episode of an old sitcom. And it was three minutes of video and five commercials and four more minutes of video and five commercials. It was unwatchable. Uh, and that's what you think of it. Actually, the big ones have gotten a little more clever. Uh, Pluto in particular, they run very short commercials. Uh, they interrupt you about every 10 minutes for about a 15 second commercial. It's so fast, you don't have time to mute it. You don't have time to ignore it. You don't have time to go anywhere. You're kind of stuck sitting watching through it. So it's actually a very clever approach, but it's not very intrusive. So the free really is kind of free on all of those. If you choose to, um, if you really want to reduce your costs, if you don't want to subscribe to anything, not even Netflix or Hulu or that, and you're not really picky about what you watch, I mean, if you, you know, if you, if you want to go on and watch very specific things at very specific times, you want current TV programs, you want current movies and stuff, yeah, you're going to have to pay for it. But if you just want to turn on the TV and find something worth watching, uh, the free offerings are more than enough. There are wonderful movies, there are, are uh, there's every TV series in the, in, in the world, uh, just maybe not the current series. So you don't have to pay for anything. You only have to pay for it if you want uh, a little more selection and control. Uh, Roku channels. Uh, Roku has their own. It, it's very easy to create a, a channel. It's something like creating a channel on YouTube, um, um, but it's you know, obviously delivered to a TV audience, not a computer audience. I can't even begin to tell you how many crazy channels there are, and a lot of them overlap. Uh, every pair of 18 year olds uh, in, in the world seems to have started their own horror movie channel. Um, there are very st strange ones, uh, like there's one, one that's very common is a Second Amendment rights channel. And I'm making no statement here or not. It's just, it's, some, it's, it's always some guy in his basement with a rack of guns behind him talking about Second Amendment freedoms. And they have about four videos they can do. And then they realize they run out of things to say. And that's bad enough, but there's about 50 of them. And they're all identical, except that the guy talking is different. They all get the same idea. They all start with the same approach. And it, it becomes a little bit hilarious to look at one after the other. And they're all kind of, they all kind of, they, th they think they've got more to say and they, they simply run out of something to say. Uh, and by the time they get to the fourth or fifth video, it's, hi. So you can, you can spend a whole evening going through these completely crazy channels. Uh, um, uh, uh, and, you know, with something to drink helps a lot. Um, 
and just you you're, you're not even looking for anything worth watching you're you're kind of uh you know uh, swimming through the uh the the mud of of what tv can be and it's a lot of fun um and something else oh um uh, a lot of churches actually do it too uh to to go to from sort of the ridiculous to the sublime here a lot of churches create their own Roku channel so that they can do things like they can actually um, um, broadcast their services, uh, especially these days. They can record them. They can record, um, you know, uh, seminars and homilies and so forth that uh, the congregation can watch. These are generally open to anybody who wants to watch them. And then, of course, there are bigger religious channels. There are more more general channels for each for each religion and each sect uh, that that produce some very very fine stuff. Uh, so there's, it, it's worth, but it's worth, it's worth going through all these back channels just to see what, what kind of uh, stuff uh, kind of works in the back uh, of the practical world. There are four other types that you can use as, as part of your stream. One is web video. Anything that's on the web, uh, you can stream uh, YouTube in particular. Uh, all of the streaming boxes have a YouTube app. Uh, that was kind of the big watershed. The earliest ones did not. Uh, then when Roku finally added it a couple of years in, it really broke the dam of, of why people didn't have them. Uh, so anything on YouTube, uh, you can watch uh, on, on a streaming device on your TV. And for those of you who don't know, YouTube is a lot more than three-minute cat videos. Uh, there are entire movies out there. There's very, very good movies out there. Um, a lot of them, what they are is they're kind of obscure movies where the studio has long since gone defunct. Um, there's a lot of movies from the 60s and 70s that are hard to find any other way. They've never been released on uh, any kind of uh, disc or home video. Um, there were a couple, a couple times on movie forums, I would be saying, oh, I'm looking for this really obscure Don, Donald Sutherland movie, and it was, it was made for TV, and it was never released, and somebody goes, oh, hey, it's on YouTube, and there it is, all hour and a half of it. So that's, that's a very, very valid option to fill in, not only short subject stuff, but full-length movies if you care for it. Um, cable lock channels are kind of an odd thing. Uh, they're, they're fading away. When the big um, networks and stuff got into streaming. What they did was they created a channel that would carry uh, some on-demand stuff and some alternate programming. But the only way you could get it was to have cable. Uh, to watch, you know, a lot the, back in 2017, it was a thing where people would go on and go, "Oh, look, there's ESPN." Well, you didn't get to actually watch it. You could only watch the ESPN channel of like old games and and things like that if you had a note from your cable company saying you were already paying for it. Fortunately, these are not very common, but you will run into them. If you run into channel lists and you go, oh, look, that's, you know, look, there's National Geographic, and you go to it and it turns out, you know, cable permission required. You have to have, you have to actually have to have uh, Nat Geo on cable to be able to watch the streaming channel. It's very frustrating. Like I said, a, a shrinking segment. You don't need to worry about it as much. If you get OTA channels, they're worth adding. Um, I've already said everything I had to say about that. And then what's come now is um, streaming cable. And I think, let me, let me skip to this real quick. Um, I don't have these in very good order. The, the streaming content, the cable companies are doing it. The first one is Sling, uh, DirecTV. Sling is uh, Dish Network, and they simply took their entire satellite feed and turned it sideways onto the internet. Uh, DirecTV uh, now is AT&T um, uh, cable turned onto the internet. Hulu got into it, YouTube got into it, and of course now Comcast did. You can now get Comcast as a streaming entity. It's cable. Uh, you're gonna pay for it. You're gonna pay a lot for it. You're gonna have to pay extra for, for all the tiers. Uh, but if you really, if you want to get rid of cable per se and go to a competitive service and have all of those mid-tier channels and sports and so forth, the option is there. Uh, you're not going to save any money, but you do have a choice. You don't have to go with whatever cable company comes to your door. You can go with any of these cable providers uh, from anywhere. Uh, so you do, you know, you, you can change around and, and find one you like that you actually think is worth the money. Here, let me go um, backwards here. Um, Okay, that that was that's the other so so you've got about about eight different kinds of ways to get streaming content without cable. Finding them um, is very easy. Uh, you plug in the device and like on Roku, you simply search through the channels. There are a thousand of them, and you can stop every time you stop and click on one. It gives you all the information about it. Uh, and if you want to take a moment, you can actually add it right that moment. It takes about fifteen to twenty seconds to add. And you can go right in and start looking at it. Even the pay ones will let you come in and look usually. They just won't let you actually play anything. Um, I'll skip the rest of that. It's not important. Um, the way to find what's on streaming was originally kind of difficult. Uh, you had to go to blogs. You had to go to people who knew it. You had to go to 10 different sites. Now, very easy. There's a site called Just Watch. And it's justwatch.com on, uh, on a browser. Or you can get an app for any, any mobile device, uh, both Android and iOS, uh, Apple. Uh, and it is the Google of streaming. It knows where everything is. Um, 
my, my favorite story is a few years ago, I was on a film forum and some woman was frantic. Her daughter had committed to writing a paper on some very, very obscure South African film. Um, never been released, never been released in, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere as, as, as far as anybody could tell. I went to look on Just Watch and there it was on a rather obscure small provider. And I gave her that information and her daughter was able to load that app and watch that movie. Uh, so everything is out there. You can, you can log in and create an account and configure it so that it only has the channels you prefer to watch, but it'll look down into these very, very strange dark corners for you as well if you want. So if you want to know when the third episode of Gilligan's Island is on, it will tell you. Uh, very, very worthwhile. It is a commercial service. It does push things at you a bit, but it's free otherwise. The other thing to look at is Roku's channel store. You can do that two ways. One is by having a Roku device and looking through the channel options. You can also go online. I have the uh, the actual URL. It's uh, channelstore.roku.com. It comes up in a bit here. Um, and you can page through these thousands and thousands of channels from HBO and Netflix down to uh, my favorite junk channel to the, the all the Second Amendment channels to the church channels. And it will give you a an explanation of the channel. You can't watch it on that um, on, on, on the web thing, but you can. It's a little more a little more convenient to kind of skim through and look what's there. So those are the two big ways to just go out and find stuff that you haven't uh, heard of otherwise. Just Watch is nice because if you search for five or six movies you like, maybe you like a particular era or uh, or studio or something. If you search for a bunch of them, you'll probably find out they're on one or two providers. All you have to do is add those providers and you've not only got all those movies, but everything else uh, that, that goes with it. So it's fairly easy to, to find uh, um, all the channels you want eventually. It just takes a little time, a little searching, much easier than it was a few years ago. And libraries have their own streaming system. I'm not sure Lawrence, Lawrence can jump in and, and, and say, there are a couple of channels that were created specifically for um, libraries. Uh, Hoopla uh, and Canopy are, are, are two. And they have they tend to have documentaries and somewhat more obscure movies, uh, art movies and, and, and movies that haven't made it into wide distribution. Wonderful stuff. They're free. Uh, you simply go to their website. Uh, you tell them what library you're with and you give them your library card number. That's sort of your passcode and then you're allowed to uh, unlock the app. And uh, I've actually, I did it just to explore it for this presentation. And I actually find myself watching stuff on both Hoopla and Canopy um, fairly frequently. It's very, it's, it's uh, very nice stuff. So quick summary, this is, I, I used to go into a lot of detail about this. I'll keep it a lot shorter because you can go find your own now. Um, uh, for movies, Netflix, obviously, pretty much the big king of it. Um, it they're, they're, there's not many arguments against them, uh, unless you've had them so long, you've kind of exhausted everything you want to watch on them. And of course, the, all of these guys do now have their own original productions. They, 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 they become television producers, movie producers. They're actually now in competition for Oscars. Uh, it's really, really, really kicked the studio business in the behind. Um, but Netflix, uh, Vudu is primarily pay-per-view, but they have virtually every movie there is. Um, Amazon, if you don't have Amazon Prime, Amazon is another pay-per-view service. Most of the stuff requires you to pay for it. If you do have Prime, um, it's, it makes that $120 a year much more worthwhile because you have access to uh, the vast majority of what they have uh, for free as, as a Prime customer. That's honestly the channel I tend to land on most of the time, even when there are choices. For instance, the old Star Trek series is on several providers. For some reason, I always end up watching it on Prime. The TV shows, Hulu's the big gorilla. They started off, like I said, they started off as a very small thing. They kind of swept up programs nobody else wanted, and it was free, and it was ad-driven, and they got bigger, and they got bigger, and they got bigger. Uh, now they don't have a free tier anymore, uh, but they do have, it is very low price. I think it's, I think it's still $8, uh, $7, $8. And what they do is they get almost every TV program there is. The, the program runs on CBS, and well, not CBS, CBS, because they went to their own. Uh, runs on, you know, say FX, and the next day it's on Hulu. Uh, and of course, FX is getting paid for it because it's a subscription thing. But you can basically get rid of nearly all the channels you want, and you can watch all of the shows you want, um, basically no more than about one day delayed. And it's on demand. You can start, stop, skip, and by paying that extra four bucks, you don't even have to sit through any commercials. So it was very, very uh, worthwhile. They also have many, many, many movies and their own productions as well. That's really kind of the big triad. Netflix, Netflix and Hulu for um, general viewing of nearly everything. Amazon Prime fills in a few gaps, and then Vudu for uh, for movies. Um, there are premium providers. We already talked a little bit about them. HBO keeps kind of shifting their model a little bit. They finally settled on HBO Max, 
uh, which is kind of everything. It's all the HBO stuff, every HBO uh, program, everything you've ever watched, uh, the, uh, the Wire, Shield, Shield, no, Shield, somebody else. Um, you know, Game of Thrones, of course, uh, all of those are available. It's kind of expensive. It's 15 bucks a month. Uh, but if you like HBO stuff, um, it's all there, and they have swept up a ton of other stuff to go with it. Uh, they may even hold the, the Criterion collection, I have to check. And then, of course, Disney Plus, uh, if you have kids, pretty much essential. Uh, they have all the Disney movies, and they have swept up uh, a lot of other properties uh, along those same lines. The one the, the thing, uh, don't, don't confuse um, Apple TV, which is the hardware product and disrecommended for a number of reasons. Uh, with Apple TV Plus, which is a streaming service, you can get Apple TV Plus on any streaming device that doesn't count. Um, they're just not a variation. They tend to concentrate on quality, uh, maybe a few expensive selection, but they're worth checking out. And then there's 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 a few others, uh, Stars, CBS All Access. The trick with these is to use the free trials. Nearly all of these have free trials. Uh, and the way to do it is don't do them all at once. Um, like if you make a list of them and maybe you go get HBO for the free seven days, don't look at anything else. Uh, uh, totally immerse yourself in HBO for those days. Look, just explore their whole catalog, see how much they have. Do you really want to pay them 15 bucks a month for some indefinite period to have access to it? You may, you may find out and say no. Okay, cancel it. Uh, move on to the next one. Get Disney Plus on a free uh, trial. Explore the hell out of it. Um, uh, don't, don't just kind of let it sit there. And don't subscribe to a bunch of them at once because you'll never you'll never get through them all. You'll just end up paying for them all for a while before you decide you actually really don't need Showtime or Apple TV Plus or whatever. Use the the, the free uh, uh, trials judiciously, and you'll be able to pick and choose your paid channels uh, a lot more carefully. And then all the major channels have uh, uh, streaming now. In, in 2017, it was a little hit or miss. Now um, all of the major uh, networks have a basically a national feed. Um, and nearly every major city affiliate has their own feed as well. So you can watch the NBC national feed, which will be a little spotty uh, in some of the programming because uh, some of the programming is reserved for the affiliates. But you can watch, say, the Hartford NBC uh, uh, affiliate, and it's more or less just a stream of what they're already broadcasting. Uh, there are some differences, that licensing issues, commercial issues, and stuff, but generally it has a lot of it. Um, for a while, the choice was a lot of people had, I think it was the New York ABC station and the Dallas CBS station because they had the biggest, uh, most continuous feed of all that stuff. Now you have many, many, many more choices. You can get virtually every broadcast channel, uh, the Spanish language channels. PBS has a, uh, started off a little bit thin. They didn't have all of their uh, uh, programming up because, of course, they wanted to drive you to the local uh, provider whom you were hopefully supporting with your donations. Now, PBS has, if it's on PBS, it's probably on the PBS app. Uh, and they do ask for donations there too, but um, um, you can, you know, you can get a, a free tote bag uh, by donating your $25. So that's basically the big picture of what's out there. And you will find this as soon as you kind of tap in and go look for it. No real reason to go on any, any, any longer about it. Uh, um, uh, just, you know, because everybody has different tastes and different ones, but it's pretty much all out there. Here we go. We're talking about this. That's one way to fill in if you really, really want all those middle cable channels. Uh, uh, that's pretty much the only way to get them. But you do pay. For it. And of course, sports. Some of you have a TV only to watch sports. In 2017, um, it was a little spotty. Uh, there was not good coverage. Uh, there were a lot of things were not available. Uh, now, pretty much everything is available if you want to go find it and pay for it. The big source for each one of them now is there is a league channel. For virtually every league. MLB TV was, I think, the first. Um, uh, I think NBA or NHL was the second now, and then uh, NFL came along. The rumor is uh, that by about now, uh, NFL was actually going to pull all broadcasting. It was uh, NFL games were not going to be available on cable or on broadcast TV or on premium TV. If you want to watch an NFL game, you would have to subscribe to the NFL channel because, of course, they weren't making nearly enough money from all those licensing rights. Uh, so uh, I don't know where that's at. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, but I think it may still be in the cards. So uh, uh, just keep that in mind. And you can, between that, if you have any OTA channels, you have some more additional coverage. There are, um, you know, area regional th um, providers like uh, New England Sports Network. You can find pretty much everything out there now if you look uh, and are willing to pay for some of it. You can get every Patriots game. You can get every Red Sox game. You can get uh, every uh, Bruins game. Um, which was not true a few years ago. 
Uh, if you're an absolute mad sports maven and have to get every every game you possibly can, that may be one of the very few reasons to still hang on to enough cable to make sure you have all those channels. But generally, it's worth exploring streaming because the choices are out there. And uh, so that, that's pretty much everything for video. Basically, I assume you looked at, uh, uh, you know, you'll, you'll look at whether or not you can make an OTA TV, uh, antenna work. Uh, do you have good uh, internet? Do you found a streaming box you like, Roku? Uh, and you found all the channels you want. Uh, we're good for that. The other service that a lot of you probably get from cable is uh, phone service. Uh, Connecticut was one of the last places I knew of people actually still had AT&T Copper because it's so reliable. Um, so some of you may have that and may want to keep it. But if you have uh, phone service through cable, you can get it from anybody. It's not like uh, Ma Bell, where you have to work with the local provider. All the cable company is doing is providing internet-based phone service. And there are many, many, many internet providers. The one I happen to recommend is Vonage. I had it for many years. Um, it's not the cheapest, but it's a very, very good phone company. They have beautiful services. They have a web page that you can go and you can control your whole, whole account and numbers you are blocking. Uh, you can block Rachel every time she calls on every different number. Does Rachel still call? I don't know. Uh, she did a lot when I was there. Um, it's all it's all basically um, internet based now, so it doesn't really matter where the provider is. You can go with any of them. The two that, are, that uh, to look into that are service-based, basically they give you the little box free and then they charge you for the service are Vonage and then Broad Voice. Um, you're probably familiar with the gadget-based ones, uh, Uma and uh, the infamous Magic Jack, uh, which basically sell you the box for kind of a lot of money and then promise you free phone service. Well, it doesn't really work that way anymore. Uh, the FCC kind of got mad at them for not paying the, like the regulatory fees and things like 9-11 um, uh, support fees and stuff. So now you buy an EMA box and you have free phone service, but you have to pay a five dollar bill, five dollar a month bill, uh, to cover all those fees. So uh, I really don't recommend the gadget based ones. They kind of once you've bought it, they have no real incentive to keep you uh, happy, whereas the service based ones do. So if you're gonna if you're gonna go if you're gonna switch your phone company, I would go to one of the service based ones. Uh, and yes, they are real phone companies. You can transfer your number. You can get every service you need. You can get multiple lines. Um, uh, they're just as good as anything uh, the cable company does, and they're typically a lot cheaper. So let me summarize. Everything is really a lot easier than I said, other than, other than the, the, the nuts and bolts of internet. Um, uh, it really is a lot easier. Uh, here's the entire presentation on one slide. We could have avoided that whole last hour. Uh, could have just thrown this slide up and everybody could have gone to dinner. Um, number one, make sure you have good internet service. Uh, good Wi-Fi is an asset. Uh, buy your own connection equipment uh, if you possibly can. You'll save all the rental costs and you'll have better quality and you'll have more security. Buy a good streaming device if you don't have something that'll already work for you. Uh, switch to an independent phone provider if you want to maintain your uh, maintain a landline. Um, basically, you connect and configure the streaming device. Connecting it is maybe a little bit technical, but not too bad. A lot of them come with very, very good. I, I, think, I think the Roku has, it actually has an on-screen thing. Uh, it, it basically, it comes up with menu after menu after menu that says, okay, now do this, okay, now do this. And it's relatively simple to do. Someone who has a little bit of technical expertise uh, would be an asset, but it's not, you're not, you're not gonna be hung up with it. Uh, if you, I see probably nobody in that region is gonna get decent over the air TV, but it's worth exploring. You can look at, look at the FCC uh, site at your address. And really that's it, find your channels and watch. Um, uh, the rest is just in the details. Forward a little bit slower. Uh, here's the six steps to get from cable to TV. First thing to do is experiment with streaming content. Almost all of you have, I mean, everybody who's on this uh, has, has something that will do streaming, even if you're doing it on a desktop computer or a laptop. Uh, but if you happen to have a streaming device like a smart TV that you never used or a, a disc player that has it, go try it. Uh, you have nothing to lose by fiddling, spending the rest of the evening fiddling around with it. Um, if you stay with cable, uh, buy your own equipment, uh, you'll save money. Uh, drop their phone service for uh, for a cheaper, better alternative. Um, sometime uh, when you're when you're convinced, buy a streaming device. Again, I recommend Roku. Anyway, highly isn't really the right word. I, 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 it's the only brand worth considering, particularly for someone starting out. Uh, and when you do, this is the this is where it gets tricky. Don't just buy it and then not use it. Buy it and stop looking at cable. Uh, force yourself to take the time to go through the channels, find your channels, find the options. Find all the new stuff. Use cable only when there's a program on that you really want to watch and you haven't found an option. Um, otherwise, what's going to happen is you'll, you'll put in the streaming and you'll kind of never get over there. You'll never get around to actually canceling cable, which would be the next thing. Once you are comfortable streaming, 
drop cable. You can drop it for any provider who gives you the best internet plan and the best uh, bang for the buck. Uh, you don't have to stay with a cable company. Um, when you, I, I've got a long, uh, I've got, a, I've got a slide on how to argue with cable company. It comes down to this. They will do everything, and then they'll finally say something like, "Well, you've got six months more to run. If you want to cancel now, there'll be a fee of such and so." Do the math. It may be worth paying that fee. If you're stuck with another five or six hundred dollars worth of cable subscription payments, it might be worth paying seventy-five or hundred dollars to get out of the contract. So let's I can talk more about that. Add streaming devices for every location. Um, what I recommend is you get a box for your living room, and then if you're, you know, unless you're absolutely never going to need it in a third place, get a stick for upstairs. Plug that one into your bedroom, and then you can take that one. You can move it. You can, uh, you know, let the kids borrow it. You can take it to a neighbor's house. You, a, a stick is a second one. So is a really good choice. But having one in each location you want to watch makes it very convenient. And again, check out OTA channels. Uh, um, probably not not very productive for your corner of the, of the state, but it's worth looking at. And even though you can't get rid of um, the fundamental cost of broadband, uh, it's, it's a lot less than you're paying for a cable package, particularly after the introductory offers expire. And they can't yank you around. Uh, they can't keep changing channels. They can't keep rearranging the packages so you have to subscribe to one more. They can't keep, I mean, when they just go renumber the channels, it's pain in the butt. Uh, so they, they, they base all, all they're doing is they're providing a service like electricity. They can't tell you what you can plug into that electricity or, 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 or you know, town gas. They can't tell you what appliances you power uh, or what to do with your water. It's just another service uh, and they basically stop bugging you. Uh, so that's where that, that's been priceless to me. I, in about the third or fourth session I gave, there was a guy, I think it was an Avon and he told me he had, they had, they had four cable boxes. They had one in the living room, one in the master bedroom, and then one in each of the two kids' bedrooms. They had every single premium uh, service and they'd had it so long that it was on like full rates. There were no longer teaser or introductory rates. Both of his kids had gone to college two years before. They never watched TV in the bedroom. They hardly ever watched the one in the living room. He was paying $450 a month to keep all of this stuff. And that was the reason he had come was he sort of needed somebody to sort of kick him and, and, and tell him to do better. I got an email from him a month later. He'd gone to one Roku in his living room and was paying $40 a month for all of his uh, entertainment. So that may be a little extreme, but nearly all of you should be able to chop your bills by quite a bit, um, especially if, if you go to uh, very low cost internet and are very selective about your uh, uh, subscription and paid services. So again, uh, that's basically nearly every, every detail of what I've said is on, uh, is on that site. And uh, after the last session, somebody asked for it. There's actually kind of a cheat sheet that, uh, that summarizes the whole presentation. So, uh, it's not that it doesn't not a substitute, but it's enough to remind you of everything that I said and point you to all the right sites to find things. Um, and there is an email address there. If I don't answer any questions tonight, I'm happy to answer fairly general, simple questions. I, I can't be a private consultant or help you with your own, you know, your, your own internet problems too much. But I, but if, if if you miss a question tonight, you can follow up. I'll be happy to answer. And again, there's the two for OTA uh, uh, information and for streaming content. Those are on the site, but there they are again. And this site always got a big laugh in live. I just kind of have to imagine it now. Um, uh, so these are the additional topics I have. I'm basically, I'm going I'm to look through the questions here and see if there's anything I didn't answer. And I'm happy to answer more questions. These are topics that I kind of cut out of the main uh, thing. I could go into great length about any one of these. Uh, if, anybody, if anybody wants to hear like uh, more about the technical thing or more about the other appliances. So uh, let me a second here while I look through the... Um, um, I think, I think I've, um, yeah, on a, you do need an antenna uh, to pick up uh, broadcast channels. Most people have never bothered. The connection is sitting there on the back of your TV, quietly gathering dust and being ignored and feeling very lonely. Um, uh, but uh, there, there's, a couple, there's a couple of towns that surprised me. I think it was Darien. Uh, I pulled up their things. They get as many channels as I do because they're just across the water from New York. Uh, anyone who doesn't spend 20 or $30 on an antenna and stick it up on the wall is just literally throwing away money and entertainment possibilities. So all, virtually all, all TVs, for a while there, uh, you might remember at the beginning of like the plasma uh, thing, you could buy either a plasma TV that actually had tuners and stuff built in or a plasma monitor, which only worked with the video equipment. Monitors have virtually disappeared from the market. Everything is sold as a TV, even if you don't use the TV part. So if you have channels available, it's sitting there waiting for you to, to, to use. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. 
there are uh, um, there's there's a couple of options for local channels. Uh, you can uh, you, uh, you don't necessarily have to go with one of the cable providers to get them. Uh, like I said, uh, you can get the national affiliate channels, uh, which are a little generic, of course. They don't have your local news and stuff. And many times you can get uh, virtually any nearby city or any city that you have an affinity with uh, uh, and watch their news programs, their local programming and stuff too. Uh, something that uh, actually after the last, uh, I got a question in the last session uh, about um, uh, how to find like broadcast uh, TV channels. And again, this may not be too important, but I, I found a great resource. TVGuide.com still exists. Uh, they're not very good. They want you to pay for the, the premium service so that they give you the more channels. This guy found with us something called TitanTV.com, exactly the way it sounds. T-I-T-A-N-T-V.com. It is a spectacular um, TV listing site that is apparently all ad-driven. There's no fees, there's no subscription, there's no membership. And I gave up scrolling after about the third, three or four hundred channel uh, uh, that, that it lists. So if you want uh, basically a TV guide type thing, if you've gotten used to that on cable to help you find what you're looking for, uh, titantv.com appears to be one heck of a solution. I don't have that on the website yet. It was uh, brand new. Um, if you have a bundled uh, contract, you're going to have to untangle it. Uh, bundles can be a good idea. And in the end, you may not save a lot of money by getting rid of things they're throwing in, quote, free, uh, but you will have that more control. If you go down to where they're providing you with nothing but internet, um, uh, you, like I said, they can't yank you around. You're, they're just they're providing a very simple service and you make all your own choices. If you have it bundled with um, uh, internet, uh, cable TV, phone, uh, landline phone, and, and, your, and your, uh, your, your wireless phone service, you're going to have to untangle that and find a different combination of, of services. And sometimes you can't, but don't be fooled by kind of an artificially low introductory price. So fine. It's only $79 for, uh, you know, for the first six months and then it's 140. Uh, and pretty soon you don't get those, those, those introductory prices anymore. So kind of do the long-term math, kind of look at the overall picture and decide how much reducing the hassle is worth maybe not saving quite as much money. Uh, there's uh, the the, the uh, I'll, I'll put the, I'll, I will put this on the website uh, pretty much as soon as I'm done here because I forgot to do it before things. The two sites the two sites you want to go to for um, the, the the TV guide I think one is plain old TVGuide.com and uh, th that's a very familiar format it may be useful to you. Uh, the other site is it's called Titan TV T I T A N T V Titan TV dot com and I will put that up on the website uh, in as soon as I'm done here because I do it. Um, Let's see. Um, as, as for all of the costs that cable companies do, uh, they, they, I, I skipped over that. I, I, I don't know if anybody is familiar with how deceptive they can be. Uh, they, you know, there, there's all kinds of games they play where, I mean, first of all, there's introductory rates and there's, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's you know, reward rates, things like that. And those expire and you pay a lot more. Um, a lot of you may not have looked past the first page of your bill or the, the online payment portal where it just says, you owe me 93.27. If you look past that, and the more you look, the more confusing it gets because there's, you know, you're only paying 49.95 for the cable uh, and they make a big deal out of that, that somehow you have qualified for this lifetime rate they will never raise, but they keep tacking on other things. And they do it in a very deceptive way. They, you know, it's it's the the, the ba you know the rate they will never raise only applies to basic cable, whereas the packages and tiers keep going up, or they keep charging you for equipment and they have it buried um, um, way down in the in a thing. And so they're charging you five dollars a month or ten dollars a month for equipment that only costs twenty or thirty dollars. Um, and the other thing they do is with fees. There's a fee section down there, and there's the E911 fee and the state sales tax fee and the government regulation fee and stuff. And that's generally where they stick in something called line service fees or technical fee or administrative fee. And they're going, ha ha, look at that. The government's stealing more money from you. Well, it's not the government, it's them. They have simply tacked on a 10 or 15 or $20 charge on top of the rate that they promote. Uh, it, it just, like I said, it's, 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 if nothing else, uh, we need to drop cable just to teach them a lesson. And frankly, we are. Cable companies are running scared. Uh, they are losing customers at a rate they can't believe, which is why they're frantically trying to move into streaming and bring their almost predatory pricing model 
uh, into streaming. So we need to push back against that as well. Um, question about Wi-Fi. Um, I really I think it gets into more technical things than I can. I mean, I do have an answer, but it's a whole section in itself. Um, Wi-Fi is usually badly implemented in most people's houses. What they do is they let the provider put it wherever the signal came in. It's in a back bedroom. It's uh, in a utility room, and it doesn't propagate very well through the house. What you need to do is is move the Wi-Fi unit somewhere more central. <clears throat> like in my house, I have a square box house here in Denver, two stories, and I went to the trouble. I brought the wiring to the middle of the house, and I have a stairwell, and that's where my uh, um, Wi-Fi unit is. So I have a very hot signal to every single corner of the house, whereas if I left it where it was, half the house wouldn't have good coverage. There's no simple answer to that. You do need somebody who is technically adept enough. The advantage of most houses in Connecticut, uh, one of the things I miss, uh, out here in the West, all houses are on slabs. It's very difficult to run wiring. You have to crawl around the attic or drill holes or something. I loved having my house in Tolland where it was, you know, had a full basement, which is like having the house up on, on a jack. You can go under there and do anything you want. I ran wiring all through the house very, very easily. Um, it is easy to get somebody, if you can't do it yourself, it's easy to get somebody who can do it fairly inexpensively. Move your Wi-Fi unit to a more central location. If you have a bigger house, put in two um, Wi-Fi, they're called APs, access points. Uh, you can put in multiple ones. I don't recommend the ones that are called repeaters. That's what we're pushing right now is where you just sort of can put them anywhere and plug them in and they all talk to each other. Well, you're gonna have the same problem. Uh, a can't talk to B very well, so C can't talk to B very well, so you really don't gain very much. If you actually run the wiring so that you have um, a an AP point at both ends of a big house, you'll have wonderful Wi-Fi all through the house. That's about as technical, and that, that's about as much time as, as as I can really spare on it. But it is it is a sol it is a solvable problem. Wi-Fi is not inherently crummy. Uh, and Um, sort of, I guess, our cable TV programs available through these. Yeah, that's what all of these these cable bundlers are. You can go look at each one of them. Um, I think I have them listed on the site. Uh, you, and, and they all, what they've all done is they've all swept up contracts for all of those mid-range channels. So you get the 30 or 40 or 50 bolt channels. Uh, and that's a, the only way to get a lot of them. Uh, you can't get them independently, unfortunately. Um, any, uh, any, any, any uh, more specific questions uh, about what, uh, uh, what I've got up here? Anything I haven't covered? <clears throat> oh, I get that question a lot, uh, uh, consultants to hire. And I was asked if I was, I, what I really should have done, I really should have used this as a big sales platform for my own services. I would have retired wealthy, I think. Um, but I never did. I, 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 and I don't know any, uh, there is no, um, like, there's no, like, geek squad or there's no, there's no large scale provider of this kind of stuff. Um, and it kind of falls into a niche. It's not really, you don't really want to call a phone guy. You don't really want to call an electrician. Um, you would have to look specifically for someone who does exactly this home internet wiring. Uh, and almost all of them now are probably very, very familiar with doing wiring for video and set up for video as well. And that's as much as I can tell you, unfortunately. I don't, uh, I don't know anyone. I can't recommend anyone. And uh, you probably couldn't afford my airfare. So um, any other questions, folks? There are, there are a couple more questions up there, Jim. I do think we need to wrap it up, but there's anything else you can do. OK, uh, let, me, let me hit these last couple very quickly. Um, Buying good routers, but that's again, it's another another session. Um, basically, it takes it's best to go with someone who um, who knows what they're buying. Buy good equipment. Most of what you can buy uh, online and from and, and from good providers is is good. There's not too much junk out there, but you do need to know exactly what you're buying. Again, it's just too complex to get into in this. Um, and casting, I can do very 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 quickly here. Um, we, Uh, very, very quickly, uh, what you do is you need a device that can accept casting, which is most smart TVs. Uh, Roku's will do it. And the third option is the device you see on the screen. It's uh, called a Google Chromecast. Uh, it's often lumped in with streaming devices, but it doesn't actually have any uh, function of its own. What you do is you plug into the TV and you can, it, 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 it works as a casting hub. 
Uh, what you do is on your phone or on a tablet, you call up a video service, uh, Netflix, any uh, uh, YouTube, any of them. And there will be a little symbol up in the corner that looks uh, something like this, it's called it's a casting symbol. And once you have set up, once, you, once, you're, once your casting device, your tablet or your, or your phone knows that your TV exists, your TV knows it exists, you just tap that key and it throws the program. You found a program on Netflix, you found a program on Hulu or YouTube, and it throws it to the TV and the TV takes over from there. The important part is it doesn't go through that device anymore. Uh, the TV is actually going out and getting the signal itself from Wi-Fi or from a direct internet connection. So it's not going through your phone and using up data. Your phone just told it what to do. Casting, if you have a nice phone, if you have a nice tablet, if you want a very, if you want to put like all of your um, channels and control and options in one device rather than having to spread it across three or four, it's a great way to go. It does take a little more technical expertise. Um, I don't have much to say about universal remotes and voice control. It's kind of, an, again, another thing. Most of these things do have voice control. The thing I just like about it is there's a privacy issue. Uh, if you can sit in the middle of your living room and go, hey, Alexa, show me a Nick Cage movie. It means Alexa's listening to you all the time. And I really don't, I don't know about you, but I don't really trust Google not to, Google and Amazon and, and uh, Apple not to be listening for purposes. They keep getting kind of caught with their fingers in the cookie jar, uh, extracting data. They want, I don't really want it in my living room listening to me. So I don't make much of those. Um, but uh, as far as universal controls, there's many. Uh, Logitech makes some good ones, uh, and they're easy to configure. And that's about all I have time to say. Uh, a lot of smart TVs, yes, uh, will take Bluetooth uh, keyboards. Uh, I haven't found mine very useful, but um, uh, it, it's a feature to look for when you're shopping for one if you want to be able to uh, enter search information and stuff a lot faster than doing that, you know, click, 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 click thing. So anything else, folks? Hope it's not useful. Um, like I said, I, I can't answer a few questions uh, uh, via email if you think of something an hour from now. Uh, and uh, all, all of the web, all of the um, websites and everything, including that one that I forgot, are on the website. You can go look there. There is a uh, kind of a cheat sheet to summarize everything for you. And uh, if you have uh, any, 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 anything else, uh, I'll be uh, happy to throw it in uh, somewhere down the road. Well, thank you so much, Jim. That was uh, very thorough. I think a few people are a little cautious about going out on their own, but I said, try a kid for a consultant for starters. Yeah, uh, there, 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 there's always there's always a 13 year old, uh, your 13 year old kid or a nephew or a neighbor or somebody walking down the street uh, probably knows enough to help. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I was always fortunate in being somewhat smarter than my kids, but uh, um, I'm not sure that's true anymore. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for coming. And uh, have a great night and stay warm. Thanks, folks. Thank you. You're all welcome. Wow. Great presentation, James. It's been polished over a lot of time. Are, is the FCC website linked on your site? Yes, every, everything is on the website. Okay, I'll check it out. I, uh, I already took a quick peek over it just to see. Yeah, I said, okay, that's what he said. You know, just in case it was a spelling difference. Yeah, I'm in Punta Gorda, Florida. Oh yeah, you'd have slightly different channels. Oh, I know somebody oh. threw a question about the, uh, the, the, 40, the $45 surprise. I may as well throw it in for those of you who are still here. Uh, when I was doing this in 2017, there was a guy who was giving a learning exchange course up there, generally in the Hartford area, uh, about how to get free TV forever. And his entire presentation was about how to put up an antenna. Uh, and it was a $45 course. So I've just saved you $45. You can send me any portion of that if you like. Yeah. Uh, but that was that was that was the that was that that was the the yeah. $45 surprise. The problem is I have is I live in a steel and concrete. Uh, condo building so uh a lot of steel in a building yeah yeah you, you have to, you, you have to go with cable or a community uh, antenna for something like that it's very difficult to receive inside those yeah well, i can uh, hang something right by the window and i get some channels but not all of them yeah. james so right you mentioned your website yes what is your website where we could see the the cheat a sheet a cheat sheet 
Uh, here, I'm going to bring that page back up. Uh, yeah, I gave it a couple of times uh, right there. It's uh, nitropress.com. Oh, you know, I realized I just screwed that up. That's uh, There's no com on that. That's really stupid of me. It's nitropress.com slash CTC will take you right to that page. And if you just go to the site, there's a link from the top page as well. When is part Thank you two? so much. When is part two of the lecture? Uh, that's pretty much it, but I've got uh, 15 more sessions <laughs> so far. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Thank you. Thank you well, for being there for us. Happy to.